the formula. Take a few drops of determination. Add ambition and a fearless instinct, tempered with calm coolness and controlled high-speed reactions. Stir in a generous amount of natural driving ability that has matured from an early age. Combine precision with sheer determination. Include a love for sports and speed. Add winning talent and a G-force defying level of fitness. Allow all this to develop in the field. Then garnish with boyish good looks, generosity and popularity. Finally serve with charm and poise, then you will have a champion. No less, a seven time world champion. This is Michael Schumacher, the Red Baron. A champion that is known to fans and colleagues alike as the greatest driver the sport has ever seen. And voted the most popular driver among Formula One fans. The man who became the first German to win the Formula One World Championship. From pedal cars and carts to high octane Formula One racing, Michael Schumacher became the leader of the pack, acing all in his path. His fans refer to this German Formula One pilot affectionately as Schumi, Shui and Shu. But the Red Ferrari pilot has also become known as the Red Baron in deference to Manfred von Richthofen, the famous German World War I flying ace who also blitzed all in his path. There's a certain kind of ritual that a driver must go through to get into the racing frame of mind. Schumacher has described himself as ready to go the moment he gets into the car. There's no need for him to adjust. He is totally focused and prepared for the hunt of the racetrack. It is little wonder that the German F1 ace is known as the Red Baron. His ice cool attitude to stress, his dogged determination to take all in his path and the bright red Ferrari has meant that the term has stuck. Born January 3, 1969, Michael Schumacher grew up in Hirth Hermelheim, a large rural community of Germany near Cologne. This region of Germany has proudly produced three famous people. All Formula One drivers, they include Michael, his brother Ralph, and the ill-fated 1960s champion Wolfgang von Trips. When Schumacher was four, his bricklayer father Rolf modified the young boy's pedal cart by adding a small engine. After the young Schumacher crashed the pedal cart into a lamppost, his parents took him to the local Kirpen karting track that the legendary Von Trips had established in 1961. Championed and encouraged by Rolf, his cash-strapped father, the youngest member of the karting club soon had a new cart, which had been cobbled together from recycled parts. Nevertheless, by the age of six, Schumacher had won his first club championship. Soon it became a family affair to support the young Schumacher's racing hobby. Mum Elizabeth worked at the track's canteen stand, while his dad took on a second job renting and repairing carts at the Kirpen circuit. By the age of 10, Schumacher's ability on the karting track had attracted the attention of a local sponsor, who, combined with the help of family and friends, supplied the necessary cash for him to continue in the sport. It was not long before the promising champion blitzed the entire karting field, chalking up victory after victory. By the end of the 1985 season, the German Junior Championship was his for the second year running. Now he was truly getting into his stride with the 87 season culminating with his greatest achievements to date. Both the German and European Senior Kart Championship were his. All this success had not gone unnoticed. 1988 was a big year for the teenage Schumacher. He took his leave from school, began a career as a motor mechanic and launched headfirst into formula racing. His prowess and winning reputation at the helm of karts enabled him to attract further sponsorship and move into the high-speed world of open-wheel formula racing. When former hotelier Willy Weber, a racing enthusiast and car salesman, invited Schumacher to test drive his Formula 3 car, the results convinced Weber to back the teenager's career. This was the beginning of one of the most successful management contracts of all time. For the next two years, funded by Weber, he competed in the German F3 series, winning the title in 1990. Towards the end of 1990, he joined the Mercedes Junior Racing Program in the World Sports Prototype Championship. 
This was an unusual move for a young driver. Most of Schumacher's contemporaries would instead compete in Formula 3000 on their way to Formula 1. However, Weber advised Schumacher that exposure to professional press conferences and driving powerful cars in long distance races would help his career. Two years later, he stood third on the dais of the German F3 Championship, but went on to win that title a year later. Finally, Michael was able to show the world what he had learned in his kart days. He won five times and later topped that by also winning the international races at Macau and Fiji. A year later also saw his Formula 3000 debut, where he finished second in the Japanese series. But it was enough to attract the eyes of many in the F1 market. With Weber at the helm of the burgeoning champion's career, Schumacher made his Formula 1 debut with the Jordan team at the 1991 Belgian Grand Prix. Despite retiring on the opening lap of the race with clutch problems, Schumacher had impressed the Jordan team on his first outing in an F1 car. He had qualified for a seventh grid position on a track that he had not driven beforehand. He had only ever ridden a bike around it. This was to be Schumacher's only race for Jordan, with rival team Benetton swiftly signing him up for the very next race. Schumacher finished the 1991 season with four points in six races. After overcoming contractual issues with Mercedes, Schumacher took his place on the podium for the first time at the 1992 Belgian Grand Prix. The race at Spa, a circuit that was to become his favourite track, showed for the first time his winning ability on a wet racetrack. He went on to finish the season in third place in the drivers' rankings with eight podium finishes. He continued with the Benetton team and in 1993 saw him win a superb race in Portugal, rounding off the season fourth overall. Michael stunned the Grand Prix world when he was quicker in the Benetton than Senna was in the Williams. The 94 season saw Schumacher leading in the World Championship stakes, despite the setback from a two-race ban. At the headquarters of the sports governing body in Paris, Schumacher failed with an appeal against the ban. The punishment was imposed by the FIA after the German driver ignored a black flag at the 94 British Grand Prix. The flag, which orders a car back into the pits, was shown to Schumacher after he broke the rules by overtaking Williams driver Damon Hill on the warm-up lap. Schumacher was also disqualified from the later Belgian Grand Prix for a technical infringement, and the gap between him and Hill in the championship table was reduced to 21 points. Hill stood to close the gap to one point if he won the two races in the Benetton driver's absence. This was not to be. With his October win at Jerez in Spain, Schumacher had chalked up 10 wins in 50 starts and retained a five-point lead over Britain's Damon Hill. The youngest driver ever to compete for the World Championship, his confidence was subdued as they went into the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. It would be nice if this will be the race which decides the World Championship because this means the only driver who can get World Champion is me because I have a five-point advantage and if somebody can come out of Suzuka as a champion, it would be me, as I said. But I think it's going to be very difficult. Suzuka is a circuit which I like personally very much. But as we have seen, we are very tight with Williams and Damon Hill together. And it's going to be very, very difficult for us. With Schumacher leading by a single point going into the final race of the year in Australia, the 1994 season, which had been marred by the deaths of Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger, drew to a close in dramatic fashion. The tensions had grown throughout the year, after the allegations of cheating had been aired. The culmination of a down-to-a-wire contest for the championship between Schumacher and Hill was in sight. The Nigel Mansell victory at Adelaide was overshadowed by a crash between Schumacher and Hill, putting them both out of the race and subsequently deciding the world title. The 1994 Drivers' Championship was determined with Schumacher's 92 points, leaving him the narrow winner after a year of tragedy and drama. For the youngest ever driver and the first German to win the Formula One World Championship, the celebrations were short-lived. 
as the British tabloids saw that one of theirs had lost and they went on the attack. Amid growing controversy surrounding the circumstances of his win, a subdued crowd met the 25-year-old world champion when his plane touched down in pouring rain at Frankfurt on his return to Germany. Schumacher said there were no hard feelings between himself and Hill, who both had to retire after the crash. Hill had congratulated him and he did not get the feeling that Hill was bitter. It would have been better to have won the Australian race to win the title, as the crash was not a nice way to end it. Schumacher said he had steering problems throughout the race, but did not look in his mirror because he was concentrating so hard on the steering. By the time he saw Hill, it was too late to stop. But if Hill had waited, he could have overtaken later. Michael Schumacher offered his world championship triumph to the memory of Ed and Senna. Schumacher, in typical self-depreciating manner, had shrugged off praise to honour the Brazilian champion. He said, it hasn't sunk in that I've won yet. I want to dedicate this victory to Ayrton Senna. I always thought he'd win the championship this year. For me, he was the greatest. Not to be put off by an international controversy, Schumacher's hometown of Kirpen celebrated in typical German fashion on their hero's return. A smiling Schumacher waved to 20,000 cheering fans. He was presented with a special medal of the town. For his fans, the Paris-based FIA seemed a long way away. I know that uh, there have been some investigations in future situations. The 1995 season was just as successful. Schumacher effectively defended his title with Benetton. He took Benetton to its first Constructors Championship and became the youngest two-time world champion in Formula One history. Schumacher now had Renault power to match the Williams and he dominated the season. It was marred, however, by several more collisions between himself and Hill. In an overtaking manoeuvre, Hill took them both out of the British Grand Prix near the start of the race. Having taken nine GP wins, Michael finished the season to take his second championship. At the track, where he began racing go-karts as a youngster, Schumacher gave a demonstration of high-speed racing in a kart and was just as swift at denying rumours that he was on the verge of signing a deal with Italian team Ferrari for the next season. For me, it is important that I will have a car and a team that can win the world championship, he said. I'm happy at Benetton, and many things will have to be right with a new team if I'm going to change. I have had talks with Ferrari, but there is no result yet. The German said he was talking with several teams. Uh, there is no real point to discuss it at the moment. There are four teams available I, I have the possibility to drive in and I'm going to sort out the, between the four possibilities oh, where I'm going to drive. Obviously I'm, I'm quite happy in Benetton at the moment. Uh, Ferrari would be a very nice situation to drive in as well McLaren Mercedes and Williams team is very successful as well. So there's four good opportunities and I'm going to see and find out uh, where I'm going to drive next. Having won the Formula One championship, Schumacher said this was because he was in the better team and was hopeful of clinching the Constructors' Championship for Benetton. My target really this year was not just to win the Driving Championship, uh, I wanted to win the Constructors' Championship, which is not done yet, and I think if this is done, I feel really released. And to put an end to any further speculation on his future, having struck a reported $30 million deal with Ferrari, Schumacher said he was looking forward to the challenge of driving for the Italian team in 96, saying it would give him fresh motivation. Having Villeneuve with Damon Hill in the Williams car, Gerhard John Lisi in the Benetton car, myself and Eddie in, in the Ferrari car, with a certain number of question marks over all the teams, I think it's, uh, it could be quite interesting. When it comes to Michael Schumacher's life away from the racetrack, he is an intensely private man. In August 1995, the F1 ace won again when he secretly wed fiance Karina Birch. The Schumachers also celebrated in 1997 when their daughter Gina Maria was born, followed two years later by their son Mick. Ferrari was, was a sort of option, but it wasn't very serious initially because when I think about Ferrari at the time, what, I, what was my, were my thoughts, didn't finish many races, didn't win uh, uh, a lot of times. Uh, so it was 
for me not really a big option until I have to say I met Jean Todt and our president. When I met the, these people, the story uh, changed a lot because with the human aspect, I got to know a little bit more about the team and my, my choice was a lot more easy. Ferrari, a team that had last won the Drivers' Championship in 1979, was plagued by inferior technology and poor performing crews when compared to front-running teams such as Benetton and Williams. Schumacher's signing with the Italian thoroughbred was what the mark needed. When you feel realistic and you see that Ferrari didn't finish 13 times last year, then it would be too optimistic and unrealistic to say we're going to fight for the championship. I would like to fight for a couple of victories that if I could achieve that, I would be perfectly happy. It has developed something which I would have never expected because the initial time being in Formula 1 was like you being in a, somewhere in the sea with not uh, one or two sharks, with thousands of sharks around you and you don't know which one is the one is going to bite you first. Uh, with being in Ferrari, I, I learned that most of the sharks were dolphins. They were very, very nice. Described at the time as looking more like a jet fighter than a racing car, Ferrari's new Formula One contender, the F310, was their big hope for the 1996 World Championship Challenge. Combined with a new driving team of Schumacher and Eddie Irvine, times were changing at Camp Maranello. The new car, designed by Britain John Barnard, was unveiled at a press conference in the team's Italian headquarters. A confident Ferrari president, Luca de Montezelmo, made clear his hope that the new team would win at least three Grands Prix this season. In front of more than 500 journalists, Schumacher had joined fellow driver Ireland's Eddie Irvine, Fiat chairman and Ferrari's major shareholder Gianni Agnelli. Schumacher held firm in his belief that he would win the driver's title for a third time, in this his first season with his new team. The former Benetton driver said, I'm not downplaying my chances, however I have to be realistic. We are starting something new here and I have a very high motivation. In fact, I spent four and a half years at Benetton and I felt quite empty. We'd achieved everything together and I needed a new motivation here, added Schumacher. Uh, I had the chance even to earn more money in another team. The money is, is one part. I want to be paid uh, what I feel I should be paid for the job I'm doing compared to other racing drivers. In 1996, Schumacher finished third in the Drivers' Championship, despite the team having reliability trouble causing Schumacher not to finish six of the 16 races. True to his prediction, he won three races, more than the team's total tally for the period from 1991 to 1995. The first of these came at the Spanish Grand Prix, where he lapped the entire field up to third place in the wet, using an uncharacteristically flamboyant oversteering style. The legendary Sterling Moss was to add later about Schumacher's driving in the 1996 Spanish Grand Prix it was not a race, it was a demonstration of brilliance. And by the end of 97, Michael's bid for the World Drivers' Championship was thwarted when he had ended the season in controversy. Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve had fought for the title all year. Villeneuve, driving the superior Williams FW19, led the championship in the early part of the season. However, by mid-season, Schumacher had taken the championship lead winning five races and entering the season's final Grand Prix with a one-point advantage. Fans in Schumacher's birthplace of Kirpen in Germany were disappointed when he crashed out of the European Grand Prix and subsequently out of the running for the Drivers' Championship. Schumacher fans were lapping up their hero's progress as Schumi led the European Grand Prix and seemed likely to come away from the Jerez circuit with his third World Championship title. It doesn't come more exciting than this, said one fan in a Kirpen bar. Another explained he had nothing against Canadian Jacques Villeneuve, who was Schumacher's rival to take the title, but he just didn't want his hero to lose. But when Schumacher developed a fault on his car and clouted Villeneuve's car as the Canadian overtook him, the fans' faces fell. It was his fault, said one fan. It was sad, but it was his own fault. Schumacher retired from the race and Villeneuve scored four points to take the championship. Schumacher was held to be at fault for the collision 
and was disqualified by the FIA from the Drivers' Championship. Jacques Villeneuve spoke out shortly after the International Motorsport Federation's ruling on the accident. He made light of the decision to strip Schumacher of his second place in the 97 Formula One Championship. Villeneuve expected Schumacher would have received more severe sanctions for trying to force him off the track at Jerez. Villeneuve said it was not a punishment. The FIA let him keep his victories. But the ramifications of his actions at Jerez were not to stop there for Schumacher. The FIA had stripped Schumacher of his runners-up position in the World Championship, but failed to suspend him for the collision at Jerez in Spain when Villeneuve finished third to clinch the championship. If the Canadian had gone out of the race, then Schumacher would have taken the driver's title for Ferrari. The FIA announced the decision at a news conference in the west of London. The authorities decided that Schumacher did act deliberately, but not in a premeditated way. The exclusion of Schumacher from the 1997 championship meant he lost all points while preserving the race results. With an uncharacteristically stressed appearance, Schumacher said after the hearing that he was very sorry for Ferrari fans and for Formula One in general for what he had done. It's, it's something I obviously accept due to the mistake and, and action has happened on, on the circuit in Jerez and, and I think it's, it's for me personally, it's, it's quite a uh, tough decision if you see losing my second position because with Ferrari to have a second position in my record it means something, but on the other side, I have to admit that I, I have done a mistake and I have done what I did. And I have to accept and I do accept the penalty. The 1998 season saw Ferrari's performance improving throughout the year, with times particularly faster in the second half. Michael regained some ground after the ignominy of 97, with six wins and five other podium places. In 99, Schumacher's skill helped Ferrari win the Constructors' title, but he lost his chance to win the Drivers' Championship at the British Grand Prix, the eighth meeting of the year when disaster struck. Schumacher was flown to hospital with a broken right leg after suffering the biggest crash of his Formula One career at the Silverstone race. He had careered into a triple tyre wall at about 200 kilometres per hour after the race had already been red flagged to stop because driver Jacques Villeneuve had been left standing on the grid. He suffered a double clean break of the lower right leg and bruising to his chest. Chief executive of the hospital, David Wilson, had the facts. Michael Schumacher was admitted to Northampton General Hospital this afternoon. He was assessed by the surgical team and found to have sustained a straightforward fracture of the right tibia and fibula. Schumacher was second in the championship running at the time behind Finnish world champion Mika Harkinen, who had to retire at Silverstone with car trouble. Ferrari director Jan Tott added that Ferrari has still to investigate the cause of the accident and admitted the car might have had rear brake failure. We don't know precisely yet what had happened. Uh, probably he had a brake uh, problem, but we have to investigate and of course as soon as we will have further information, we will be able to let you know. Tott made the point that if it was not for the improved safety after the fatal crash with Brazilian Ayrton Senna at Imola in 1994, the consequences could have been much more serious. Schumacher has had a few big crashes in his career, the previous most serious being at Suzuka in free practice in 1993, the season before he won the title. In that incident, the German's car flew off the track at high speed, but he escaped serious injury. Back at the Northampton General Hospital, arrangements were made for an ambulance plane to take the injured driver to the Geneva airport. At the time, Schumacher had a home in the town of wuffens le chateau Switzerland, and it was there that he was expected to start his recovery treatment at a local Swiss clinic. Motorsport's governing body, the FIA, announced that further safety measures may be implemented in Formula One as a result of Michael Schumacher's dramatic crash at the British Grand Prix. The FIA also revealed that the German Ferrari driver hit the triple tyre barrier at Silverstone at 107 kilometres per hour, much slower than previous estimates suggested. It defended the gravel traps at the British circuit after leading drivers had criticised their effectiveness in slowing the Ferrari. The FIA said the accident data recorder in Schumacher's car 
reveal that the former world champion first braked at 306 km per hour. At 240 km per hour, the front wheels locked. By the time he had left the tarmac, the deceleration had fallen to 1.3 g, equal to 35.3 km per second. The average deceleration in the gravel trap was 1.1 g. The speed of impact at the tyre barrier was 107 km per hour. The FIA said a great deal of information had been obtained about the events after the impact with the triple tyre wall, and this would be carefully analysed. FIA President Max Mosley said that despite huge leaps in car safety, since Brazilian Ayrton Senna died at the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix at Imola, Schumacher's head still hit the steering wheel of his car in the impact. Less than three months later, Michael made a public appearance to announce his return to racing. Schumacher told a news conference that he would be racing for the Ferrari team and not simply to support his teammate Eddie Irvine's World Championship bid. The 30-year-old, looking slightly tired and speaking quietly, confirmed his commitment to racing. In, uh, in qualifying, I'm definitely 100%. I don't know whether I'm different to, to before, for sure, in, in certain race uh, condition, it will be difficult for me if, if the race goes flat out from the first to the last lap, but uh, I'll have to see myself how I'm going to do in that situation. Schumacher admitted his fitness was below its normal high level, but said he felt capable of winning the Malaysian race, even though he had not yet done a full simulated race distance in testing since his crash earlier in the year. As I said before, I mean, obviously my fitness is not uh, as it used to be before, uh, on the other side is not uh, that poor either and hot weather, tough race uh, for sure can affect on one side and various weather circumstances uh, you're never able to predict them in a, in a hundred percent certain way so if there's going to be rain dry, rain dry and, uh, uh, or a thunderstorm you never know what will be the right decision so it can affect everyone. The year ended with Schumacher receiving a hero's welcome as he attended a traditional end-of-season Ferrari Open Day at Vellalunga Racetrack. Ferrari Tifosi, or fans, were on hand in the thousands to support their favourite team, which had won the Constructors' Prize in Formula One. Schumacher was obviously relishing the adoration of the team's faithful fans that turned up in chilly weather and chanted his name repeatedly. Although thwarted in the 99 driver's title, this was Ferrari's way of saying that they will be back next year with a vengeance. The new millennium ushered in a new era and a change of fortune for the Red Baron. Schumacher had recovered from injury and controversy and his winning drives were reminiscent of the heady World Championship years of the mid-90s. After a year-long battle with Harkonnen, Schumacher won his third World Championship. During the year, he had clocked up 41 wins for his F1 career, equaling the number of wins won by his idol, Ayrton Senna. An emotional Schumacher broke into tears at the post-race press conference. Schumacher was back and he was out to show the world what he could do. Michael Schumacher has shown such dominance right from the beginning of the season. Ferrari car is probably better than it's been ever before, so you see a huge influence on his own technical ability inside the team. Um, and I think we should just enjoy him because he is the world's best driver and while he's around, um, I, I, th I think for sure he will be the champion. In a season that saw only four other drivers win races, 2001 continued the run for the record-breaking Schumacher, with the first ever 1-2 finish by brothers in Formula One after the Canadian Grand Prix, where Schumacher finished second to his brother Ralph. And he also topped Elaine Prost's record for most career wins. Schumacher scored his 52nd career win at the Belgian Grand Prix and took his fourth driver's title with four races yet to run. He had finished the championship with 123 points. 58 ahead of nearest rival Coulthard and won a record tying nine times. 
2002 continued to be a year of domination for Ferrari and champion pilot Schumacher, despite suffering the embarrassment of a $1 million fine from the FIA after the Austrian Grand Prix, when teammate Rubens Barrichello had slowed under team orders and allowed Schumacher to win the race. Jeered and booed by fans on the podium, Schumacher stood back to let Barrichello take the winner's cup. The Tafossi were back on Schumacher's side when he took the French Grand Prix and equaled the record of the 1950s champion Fangio. The Argentinian Juan Fangio was considered the best driver of all time, taking the driver's title five times between 1951 and 1957. Ferrari won 15 out of 17 races and Schumacher won the title with six races remaining in the season. Schumacher broke his own record of nine race wins in a season shared with Nigel Mansell by winning 11 times and finishing every race on the podium. He finished with 144 points, a record-breaking 67 points ahead of the runner-up, his teammate Rubens Barrichello. The 2003 season started with an outcry from Formula One teams, accusing the FIA of trying to dumb down Formula One. The FIA had introduced a host of rule changes including one lap to qualify and no refueling between qualifying and the race. Engineers would no longer be able to remap settings using telemetry and traction control and launch control systems would also be phased out. The reigning Formula One champ said the rule changes would not have a dramatic impact on the outcome of races. Michael said he enjoyed the benefits of high-tech assistance but had plenty of experience of driving without them under previous regulations. For me, I prefer the one where you have all the technical possibilities because I don't like to take compromises in the race car. I like to make a race car as fast as possible and uh, all the electronics have helped that. But obviously that's the same for everyone and if that changes then it's again the same for everyone. I've dealt with uh, the other system before so I will deal with them as they come. Schumacher was convinced a good team would remain a good team whatever the rules. So I don't see that I should, or any, any good driver should uh, take the advantage by, by, a big, by a big amount. The only way I could see that, and I would agree, is in the rain condition. Because in the rain condition, um, I believe without traction control in particular, it will be very, very difficult. And uh, you need a lot more feeling in order to, to be uh, on, on the pace. On the same time, it will be quite a bit more dangerous. But uh, that has been in the past the same, and uh, we have to deal with that. So it's going to be a little bit more exciting. Throughout his racing career, Schumacher has attracted the unofficial title of the Rain Master. After finishing third in the 1992 Mexican Grand Prix, he went on to take his first victory at the 1992 Belgian Grand Prix in a very wet race at the Spa-Francorchamps circuit. By 2003, he would call this circuit far and away his favourite track. He took his first win for Ferrari at the Spanish Grand Prix in the wet, where he lapped the entire field up to third place using an uncharacteristically flamboyant oversteering style. The Ferrari driver believed that some of the younger drivers would struggle without high-tech driving aids. He added that the younger drivers with little or no experience of driving without electronic aids would probably be the first to suffer from the new rules. It will change for some young drivers who seem to get on very easy with Formula One at the moment to a certain speed. That will change because uh, with the amount of power we have, with the amount of grip we have, if you imagine that we don't have all those uh, technical possibilities, which I'm sure they save uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, problems for, for young uh, comers uh, in Formula One, because they'd they be supported with all the systems and you can make a car very safe. Not the fastest, but, but safe, and they get the feeling and you can uh, get them into the system. So that will be a lot more difficult in my view. Later in the year, rumours were rife that Schumacher intended quitting Formula One. There is nothing else I, I would wish to do and as long as I'm competitive, as long as I love uh, to do what I'm doing, there is no need to, to think about uh, stopping it. 34-year-old Schumacher repeatedly had to fend off questions about his future. The main point 
is simply the love of the sport. Honestly, what could, what could be better than to do what you love to do, to do it in a team where you be friends with, with everybody, and, and just things go smoothly. At the time, Schumacher needed just one point to overtake one Miguel Fangio's record and claim an unprecedented sixth world title. The 2003 season for the reigning champion had not got off to a good start. In fact, Schumacher ran off the track in race one and in the following two was involved in collisions. By race four, he was starting at a 16 points drop behind Kimi Raikkonen. Pulling himself back from the abyss, Schumacher won at San Marino Grand Prix and the next two races and closed within two points of Raikkonen. By mid-season, Schumacher's further win in Canada had been eclipsed by a dominating Williams team. His brother Ralph and Juan Pablo Montoya had clocked up two wins apiece. By the final round of the year in Japan, with Montoya out on penalties after the US Grand Prix, only Schumacher and Raikkonen remained in contention for the title. Schumacher needed only one point, whilst Raikkonen needed to win. By finishing the race in eighth position, Schumacher gained the necessary point, two ahead of Raikkonen and assured his place in the record books with his sixth world driver's title. With four years of unprecedented success behind them, Ferrari were heading into 2004, confident they would continue with their top achievements. Basically, I foresee a very tough competition for, for this year. We know our rivals are strong, but we will be strong too, uh, I have no doubt. Taking the winner's podium in 12 of the first 13 races of the season, Schumacher recorded his seventh driver's title at the Belgian Grand Prix. Now, my life in Formula One is just very relaxed and easy and nice. I just enjoy the time being here. We have a great success. My private life has been uh, turning out in a fantastic way. Uh, it's, it's just a, a love dream I, I live. It's time to start the new season, so we are, we are looking for it. We know it will be very tough because uh, everybody wants to take over to Ferrari because we have been so successful those last years. Um, but uh, we are still very, very focused, very motivated, uh, and uh, hopefully we are able to bring some more success to Ferrari. 2005 got off to a positive start for Team Ferrari and their ace, but it all went downhill from there. Was it the new tyre rules, or had the mighty simply fallen off their horse mid-gallop? Less than 28 days later, the team's new car, the F2005, was debuted. This car had been brought forward by a month to the third race instead of the fifth race after a poor start to the season. It's always a great feeling to jump into a new car, in particular after what happened to us in Malaysia, getting uh, kicked our butt uh, a little bit. It's, it's been great today to sit in it, feel it and, and drive it finally. Later in the year, after continuing poor performance, Schumacher was not quite so positive. I mean, last year we came here with uh, just answering the question, when are we going to win the championship uh, this year is the, is the other way, when are we going to lose it? Naturally, uh, it has been a big disappointment in Istanbul after some sort of hope we have had in Budapest and before in Hockenheim, in a way. But nevertheless, uh, Ferrari is very strongly minded. 
we have had very good years and we have had many of them so it's not so easy to move us out of our sort of uh, healthy relationship I'd say, I call it like this we're still concentrated and motivated I mean uh, after Budapest there was obviously a great hope that we will do it after Turkey the hope has shrinked a lot <laughs> so we have to see one uh, and have to be realistic it's it's all with within our work whether we can be successful on that or not He might not have been winning, but at least Schumacher remained philosophical. It has been many great moments I have been able to live in, in the 10 years I'm roughly together with Ferrari. The four wins in Monza, the wins in Imola, the wins in all around the world. They have been very special, the championships. We're suffering all together at the moment a little bit, but I mean, you can't, can't always uh, have the good life. You sometimes have to suffer to see how good the life has been and m might be again. By year's end, Schumacher had tallied just one win at the US Grand Prix, which nobody noticed, as most of the field had withdrawn for safety reasons. He had retired in six of the 19 races. He had finished the season in third with 62 points less than half the points of world champion Fernando Alonso. And to add further speculation on his retirement, Schumacher said this at the end of the season. I have a contract uh, which goes until the end of next year. At some stage uh, next year, I want to make up my mind to how is my future looking. But uh, full concentration is, first of all, to organise and, and sort out the problems to be competitive next year. The run of six consecutive constructors' titles that Ferrari had won ended abruptly that year. Something had changed. And while 2006 was still young, speculation and rumours were rife, and at Ferrari's winter retreat in Madonna di Campiglio, Schumacher refused to rule out the possibility he might race for another team in 2007. I think, honestly, I, I said it uh, very clearly and I really mean it. It's 99% Ferrari. Nothing else. Team boss Jan Tott said the Formula One team would not put any pressure on the seven times world champion to make an early decision about his future beyond the coming year. Although Schumacher was quick to reassure, the seven times Formula One world champion said his Ferrari team was showing signs of improvement having been woken up by last season's poor results of 2005. I think we can only have one target at least, and that is uh, to win the championship. Although the Red Baron was back on the pace for the championship, he was not leading the field. Schumacher fought Alonso's lead valiantly throughout the early rounds. And despite having won seven times throughout the year, Schumacher could see as the season progressed that the chance of winning back the championship was not possible. After winning the Italian Grand Prix, Ferrari issued a press release stating that Schumacher would retire from racing at the end of the 2006 season. Following that announcement, former Formula One greats such as Nicky Lauda and David Coulthard hailed Schumacher as the greatest all-round racing driver in the history of Formula One. The Italian Ferrari Tifosi paid tribute in the streets. And back home, the German fans were distraught. For most of them, an era had come to an end. Men, women and children were seen crying. Holger Hofmeier, a 35-year-old professional soldier, said Michael is really a likeable guy. He's a warm-hearted person, honest and open and the world's best race driver. Germans like that. I liked it. My children liked it. My entire family. There is only one true race driver, Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher, the Red Baron, is a seven-time Formula One world champion. He is quite simply the greatest driver the sport has ever seen, earning $650 million in salary and endorsement deals, putting him on par with superstar athletes David Beckham and Tiger Woods. By 2005, 
The German was the world's first billionaire athlete. It was in Germany that he won real hearts and endorsements. A German investment firm once paid him $8 million over three years to wear their badges on his post-race cap. In recent years, he has donated at least $50 million to third world causes, including $10 million for aid after the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. His donation surpassed that of any other sports person, most sports leagues, many worldwide corporations and even some countries. His manager told the media his goal is to turn the retiring champion into an advertising emperor as he keeps his existing personal sponsors and works on new super deals. His total fortune now reportedly surpasses $800 million. For a man who thrived on speed, Schumacher did and still does avoid the Formula One party circuit, shunning the celebrity spotlight. A family man, he now lives with his wife and children in Switzerland, in a castle he built for $50 million. So the lanky kid from regional Germany who became a dedicated kart racer before he completed high school has shown that whatever he desires to do, he does with such expertise and acclaim that the world has watched in awe. His exceptional ability to pilot a Formula One car ahead of the field pulled the lagging Italian thoroughbred race team Ferrari back from the doldrums. Amassing a record seven world championships, no other driver has come close to him. With his boyish good looks and charm, his unwavering devotion to his family, and his dedicated support to those less fortunate than him, all this combines to make the ingredients for one exceptional human being. For this is Michael Schumacher, the Red Baron. Overall, Michael stunned the Grand Prix world when he was quicker in the Benetton than Senna was in the Williams. The 94 season saw Schumacher leading in the World Championship stakes, despite the setback from a two-race ban. At the headquarters of the sport's governing body in Paris, Schumacher failed with an appeal against the ban. The punishment was imposed by the FIA after the German driver ignored a black flag at the 94 British Grand Prix. The flag, which orders a car back into the pits, was shown to Schumacher after he broke the rules by overtaking Williams driver Damon Hill on the warm-up lap. Schumacher was also disqualified from the later Belgian Grand Prix for a technical infringement, and the gap between him and Hill on the championship table was reduced to 21 points. Hill stood to close the gap to one point if he won the two races in the Benetton driver's absence. This was not to be. With his October win at Jerez in Spain, Schumacher had chalked up 10 wins in 50 starts and retained a five-point lead over Britain's Damon Hill. The youngest driver ever to compete for the World Championship, his confidence was subdued as they went into the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. It would be nice if this will be the race which decides the World Championship because this means the only driver who can get World Champion is me because I have a five-point advantage and if somebody can come out of Suzuka as a champion, it would be me, as I said. But I think it's going to be very difficult. Suzuka is a circuit which I like personally very much. But as we have seen, we are very tight with Williams and Damon Hill together. And it's going to be very, very difficult for us. Teen stand while his dad took on a second job renting and repairing carts at the Kirpin circuit. By the age of 10, Schumacher's ability on the karting track had attracted the attention of a local sponsor, who, combined with the help of family and friends, supplied the necessary cash for him to continue in the sport. It was not long before the promising champion 
blitz the entire karting field, chalking up victory after victory. By the end of the 1985 season, the German Junior Championship was his for the second year running. Now he was truly getting into his stride, with the 87 season culminating with his greatest achievements to date. Both the German and European Senior Kart Championship were his. All this success had not gone unnoticed. 1988 was a big year for the teenage Schumacher. He took his leave from school, began a career as a motor mechanic and launched headfirst into formula racing. His prowess and winning reputation at the helm of karts enabled him to attract further sponsorship and move into the high speed world of open wheel formula racing. When former hotelier Willy Weber, a racing enthusiast and car salesman, invited Schumacher to test drive his Formula 3 car, the results convinced Weber to back the teenager's career. This was the beginning of one of the most successful management contracts of all time. For the next two years, funded by Weber, he competed in the German F3 series, winning the title in 1990. Towards the end of 1990, he joined the Mercedes Junior Racing Program in the World Sports Prototype Championship. This was an unusual move for a young driver. Most of Schumacher's contemporaries would instead compete in Formula 3000 on their way to Formula 1. However, Weber advised Schumacher drops of determination, add ambition and a fearless instinct, tempered with calm coolness and controlled high-speed reactions, stir in a generous amount of natural driving ability that has matured from an early age, combine precision with sheer determination, include a love for sports and speed, add winning talent and a g-force defying level of fitness. Allow all this to develop in the field then garnish with boyish good looks, generosity and popularity. Finally serve with charm and poise, then you will have a champion. No less, a seven time world champion. This is Michael Schumacher, the Red Baron. A champion that is known to fans and colleagues alike as the greatest driver the sport has ever seen. And voted the most popular driver among Formula One fans the man who became the first German to win the Formula One World Championship. From pedal cars and carts to high octane Formula One racing, Michael Schumacher became the leader of the pack, acing all in his path. His fans refer to this German Formula One pilot affectionately as Schumi, Schui and Schu. But the red Ferrari pilot has also become known as the Red Baron in deference to Manfred von Richthofen, the famous German World War I flying ace who also blitzed all in his path. There's a certain kind of ritual that a driver must go through to get into the racing frame of mind. Schumacher has described himself as ready to go the moment he gets into the car. There's no need for him to adjust. He's totally focused and prepared for the hunt of the racetrack. It is little wonder that the German F1 ace is known as the Red Baron. His ice cool attitude to stress, his dogged determination to take all in his path, and the bright red Ferrari has meant that the term has stuck. Born January 3, 1969, Michael Schumacher grew up in Hirth Hermelheim, a large rural community of Germany near Cologne. This region of Germany has proudly produced three famous people. All Formula One drivers, they include Michael, his brother Ralph, and the ill-fated 1960s champion Wolfgang von Trips. When Schumacher was four, his bricklayer father Rolf modified the young boy's pedal cart by adding a small engine. After the young Schumacher crashed the pedal cart into a lamppost, his parents took him to the local Kirpen karting track that the legendary von Trips had established in 1961. Championed and encouraged by Rolf, his cash-strapped father, 
the youngest member of the karting club soon had a new cart, which had been cobbled together from recycled parts. Nevertheless, by the age of six, Schumacher had won his first club championship. Soon it became a family affair to support the young Schumacher's racing hobby. Mum Elizabeth worked at the track's candidate that exposure to professional press conferences and driving powerful cars in long distance races would help his career. Two years later, he stood third on the dais of the German F3 championship, but went on to win that title a year later. Finally, Michael was able to show the world what he had learned in his kart days. He won five times and later topped that by also winning the international races at Macau and Fiji. A year later also saw his Formula 3000 debut, where he finished second in the Japanese series. But it was enough to attract the eyes of many in the F1 market. With Weber at the helm of the burgeoning champion's career, Schumacher made his Formula One debut with the Jordan team at the 1991 Belgian Grand Prix. Despite retiring on the opening lap of the race with clutch problems, Schumacher had impressed the Jordan team on his first outing in an F1 car. He had qualified for a seventh grid position on a track that he had not driven beforehand. He had only ever ridden a bike around it. This was to be Schumacher's only race for Jordan, with rival team Benetton swiftly signing him up for the very next race. Schumacher finished the 1991 season with four points in six races. After overcoming contractual issues with Mercedes, Schumacher took his place on the podium for the first time at the 1992 Belgian Grand Prix. The race at Spa, a circuit that was to become his favourite track, showed for the first time his winning ability on a wet racetrack. He went on to finish the season in third place in the driver's rankings with eight podium finishes. He continued with the Benetton team and in 1993 saw him win a superb race in Portugal, rounding off the season fourth 